Uh, good morning, everyone. I was hoping we could all put our cell phones away and take out that article that I had you guys read last night for homework. Um, I know we've been busy with our L2 talks, but we need to get this going. So could anyone just start the class today with a brief synopsis of what you guys had to read? Anyone? Simon? Okay, thank you, Simon. It's quite obvious. Um, we need to remember, though, uh, the IB waits for no one. So please make sure that we're, we're doing our work. Uh, just a quick recap from the article. We remember that President Trump wants to protect American industries, and so he's going to put a protectionist tariff on all aluminum and all steel. Obviously, this is not going to make people in Europe happy, and so the EU is going to respond in kind by putting a tariff on Harley-Davidson's as well as Levi's jeans. This is that tit-for-tat trade war that we were talking about in class the other day. If you take a look at this diagram for aluminum, we can notice that when Trump is going to put a tariff on, the price of aluminum is going to go up. Now, many of you are in the audience probably thinking, Reichelmeyer, I don't buy aluminum. Well, we got to remember that aluminum is a factor of production for many things. One of those things are cans. And if a certain economic teacher needs to go home this summer to spend time with his family, he might not be very happy that the price of those cans has gone up. Currently, this is often how I start my class. Uh, I saw many of the looks out there today, um, and those are familiar looks, not only for my students, but it was very familiar to me. I remember my first year teaching economics and that feeling of being completely vulnerable. Now, over time, it's gotten better. However, I think as teachers, we often lose sight of this vulnerability. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's for a couple of reasons. One, we become masters of our content. Two, we become much more comfortable in the classroom. I remember looking at this diagram five years ago, and again, much of the look that are on my students' faces and on your faces was familiar to me. I could barely remember what the x-axis was, what the y-axis was. I didn't get an economics degree, and I definitely had a hard time making it to class my freshman year of college. However, that feeling of being vulnerable that first year was frightening. It was scary. And so I knew that I needed to get out of that zone because being there as a teacher is not good. I remember my first year as a teacher teaching IB economics. My director told me, and he knew I didn't have any experience. He just got to be a chapter ahead. Well, I had four books on the same chapter trying to read through, trying to figure out what the heck all this meant. Other times, I would go to Google. Hey, fiscal policy and lesson plan. Hopefully something will pop up, and I'll be able to use that. As time went on, I just started creating my own lessons, and I checked all the boxes, you know, creativity, engaging the learners, differentiated, and went in there and I nailed it. I got it. And then, the smartest girl in the back of the room would raise her hand, and I knew if she had a question, everyone should be asking that question. And I would just walk into my colleague's room, throw my hands up, and just say, economics won today. As I continued to battle with this, day by day, sleepless nights, long days, I realized that it was getting better. But it was getting better because I was doing this material two, three, maybe four times a day. And that's when the light bulb hit. If I'm able to get better at this material and lose that sense of vulnerability, what is going on with my students? Often they're only in there once, maybe twice. I needed to find a way to help them lose that vulnerability to become better learners. So I reflected on what I was doing in the past and I needed to change it. First thing I did was I flipped my classroom. I realized that if I was reading a textbook and I couldn't understand a lot of the complicated economic concepts, my students were probably sharing in that same difficulty. So they would watch a video, they would come in, we would work through the problems together, and that would help them. The next thing I did, I let them reassess their summative assessments. Now, I know as educators, that can be a pretty contentious debate that we can have later. However, when I saw that I needed multiple times to understand something, I wanted to recreate that for my students. And so that has been super successful for them. I think all of us have a story that you could share similar to mine. I truly believe that many of you have shared in this vulnerability. 
But I believe if we use this vulnerability and share it with the students, we can become better teachers. I believe I am a better teacher because I've embraced this vulnerability. Thank you.